How can you make a Minecraft 1.19 server? Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. We're going to go over every single step from starting the server on your computer to playing Minecraft with your friends on a server that you control. It's all going to be covered in this video. First of all, must though, I do want to mention that the server we're starting here isn't a 24-hour server. It's only up and running when your computer's up and running. On top of that, it is using your own computer's resources, meaning you need a pretty good computer to be able to run this server. Lastly, it's also hosted on your own network, meaning not only do you need a good internet connection, it also means that this is just for your friends, family, people you would invite over to your house, because anyone who can join this server can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, as well as DDoS you and hit your internet offline and do crazy things like that. That's why this server is only meant for people you trust. But what if you want a Minecraft server that could be private, could be public, doesn't matter which one, you don't have to worry about DDoS attacks, and you don't have to worry about hardware, right? It just runs somewhere else. It doesn't use your own computer. Well, the solution to that is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour Minecraft server with Apex, where the server can be up all the time if you want. It can be public. It can be private. You don't have to worry about security. You don't have to worry about hardware because it's hosted on Apex hardware. And guess what? If you want to install mods, want to install plugins, want to install mod packs, it's all simple and easy to do that at Apex. And should you run into an issue, Apex has 24 hours, seven day a week support. Truthfully, this is the easiest way to get a Minecraft server up and running. The video you're watching now is over 20 minutes long, but with Apex, you can get your server set up in under five minutes. We actually kind of went through some of that in the video that you're watching. Right now, we kind of set up an Apex server there. So nevertheless, go check out Apex. First link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex. They're the sponsor of this video. And truthfully, they are the best Minecraft server house out there. We use them for all of our Minecraft servers, including our public server, playdartbreakdowncraft.com. So again, that's the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex to start a minecraft server in under five minutes without having to port forward without having to worry about any issues apex handles all of it nevertheless though what if you do want to host a server on your own computer it's only going to be for your friends and family you've got a good enough internet connection to do it you've got a good enough computer to do it and you want to well let's go over exactly how to get that done so the first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below this is our in-depth text tutorial on how to make a minecraft server we are chapter out these videos. We do everything we can to make this as easy for you to follow, but sometimes reading it is the best way, and that's why this is here. Once you're here, though, you simply want to scroll down and under step one, click on this green download Minecraft button to open up this right here. This is the download Minecraft Java Edition server file. Basically, this is where you can download from Minecraft.net, the Java Edition server. To do that, click on this Minecraft underscore server 1.19.jar link right here. When you click on that, it'll automatically download in the bottom left of Google Chrome. You may need to keep that file or you may need to save it in the center of your screen. Either way, it's 100% safe to do that because this is hosted on Minecraft.net, right? It's the official Minecraft website. We can now go ahead and minimize our browser. And when we do that, we need to get this to our desktop. So you can find it in most likely your downloads folder. So click on the little Windows icons in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen or the bottom center of your screen on Windows 11, and then type in downloads. You have this downloads file folder here, open this up, and in here you'll have this server.jar. Drag and drop this to your desktop for ease of use. Now on our desktop, we need to create a folder. So on our desktop, we wanna right click, create a new, folder, right like so, and then you can name the server you want, but I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com because that's our 1.19 grief protected survival server. If you want an amazing survival Minecraft experience, come check out Breakdown Craft. Nevertheless, once you've got this right here, let's go ahead and drag and drop the server.jar into this folder we created. You can name this, by the way, Minecraft server, it doesn't matter what the folder's named. Go ahead and open this up though, and we have this server.jar. Now, yours may not say .jar at the end. If it doesn't, that's okay, but I know that weirds some people out. In that case, you want to click on view up here at the top and then make sure file name extensions is checked. As you can see, I uncheck it and mine just says server now, right? If I check it again, the .jar reappears. Nevertheless though, how do we get this server basically files generated? This isn't all we need. Well, you should double click on this. Now for me, I'm going to double click on it and it's not going to work, but it's going to generate these files. But if it doesn't generate these files for you, what you need to do is go download Java. Java 17 is required. And if you think you have Java, you probably don't have the right version of Java. So come back here and download Java if you can't open the server.jar. Scroll down. It's a simple three-step tutorial here to get Java installed. Once you've got Java, you should be able to open up this file. But if for whatever reason you can't, 
it's because you need to run the jar fix. And what it's gonna do, the jar fix, is take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them work correctly. So for example, if it's a zip file or a WinRAR file or something that's not a jar file for whatever reason, download Java first, because you need to make sure you have the correct version of Java, otherwise jar fix won't work, and then run the jar fix and it will link your file and your jar files to Java, which is the program that's supposed to have them anyway. So now once you've done that, you'll be able to double click on the server.jar and it will generate all of these files here. Now your server's not started yet. That's because we need to open this eula.txt file here. So you double click on the eula.txt file and it opens right like so, right? Then we want to change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Now that is assuming you agree to the Minecraft eula, which of course we do. So we're going to go ahead and do file, save, there we go. We can now close out of the eula.txt file. And when we double click on server.jar this time, the server is going to start. It's going to be pretty apparent as well because it's going to generate more files in the background world. And it's also going to open up this. This is basically your server management panel and where you can actually see all the different information about your server as it's running, specifically the console. This is where basically everything that happens on your server, people joining, leaving the server, all of that stuff, commands are logged in the console. It's also where you can see chat and all of that stuff. You've also got things like memory usage on the left-hand side here, as well as any players that join your server will show up over here on the left. Now, how do you know your server started? Well, it says done. As we're sitting here though, the server can only be joined by you. How do you join this server? Let's go ahead and do it just to show you that you can join the server. Your friends cannot join at this point. We need a port forward to do that. We'll cover that a little later in the tutorial, but let's make sure that you can join your server. I'm not gonna waste too much of your time here, so let's go ahead, jump to Minecraft 1.19 being open, and there it is. If we wanna go ahead now and click on multiplayer, you're gonna get this pop-up. You may or may not, and if you do get this pop-up, just make sure private and public networks are checked. You wanna make sure both of those are checked, and then click allow access. Now, once you've done that, what we wanna do is click on direct connection here. Once we click direct connection, we wanna go ahead and type in local, host as our IP address. Just localhost exactly like that as the server address here. Then click join server and on the left hand side, boom, look at that. There we are going in game and uh, yeah, we're in game now. We are joined. Now at this point you can run around, but let's say you want to do, be able to ban people and do things like that from in game as well as going to creative. Well to do that, you're going to op yourself. So on the left hand side in the console area, click on this little, uh, little text box at the very bottom and type op and then your username. So op and Nick's games for me hit enter and boom we have been made a server operator that means now in game we can do that game mode creative and change our game mode now the reason i wanted to do that is i wanted to get a few things in my inventory as well as pay, place a few blocks around here that way we know that i'm back here right this is where we were in fact at so there we go. When we join back in, we'll be looking at this exact same view. That's just showing you later on, it's the same server. But you can join your server, this is working. If for whatever reason it's not, it's probably something to do with Windows Defender. So if you go to the description, we have an in-depth guide on how to allow Java through your Minecraft Windows Defender firewall. This is going to work if you have issues joining your server or if after you port forward, your friends can't join your server, most likely it's actually an issue with Windows Defender linked in the description below. Nevertheless though, let's go ahead Ahead and get our port forwarding going. Let's allow our friends to join our Minecraft server. So to do that, we want to disconnect from the server. We're going to go ahead and quit out of Minecraft, right like so. Then we want to come over here and stop. We want to stop the, ch or the server completely. So type STOP, right like so, in this text box here. This is how you always want to stop your server to make sure it is stopped properly. So there we go. And now we can port forward. First things first, we need to go ahead and open up our command prompt. To do that, click the little Windows icon. It's in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen, or again, the bottom center of your screen in Windows 11. Type in CMD. You have this command prompt right here. Open that up and then in command prompt, what we want to do is type IP C-O-N-F-I-G, IP config exactly like so and hit enter. It's going to give us so much information here, but we only need two numbers. So let's go ahead, open up our handy notepad and in notepad, we want to copy over the two numbers we need. The first one is right here, the IPv4 address. So let's come over here and type this in. In my case, that's 192.168.1.16 and that is our IP. V4. So let's go ahead and label that IPv4. And then we also need the default gateway here. So let's go ahead and get that as well. The default gateway is 192.168.1.1. And that is located right here. You see, there's the default gateway. Now, if you have two lines of that, basically there's the one line on top and then one line on the bottom, get the one that's just numbers, right? You might have one that's like 
FE and has numbers and letters like this? No, you don't want that. What you want is your just numbers default gateway. So that's going to be in my case, 192.168.1.1. Could be the same for you, could be different, but it should just be numbers. Go ahead and copy that over here as well. Write it down, put it in Notepad, whatever you want to do, because we will need it here in a minute. Close out a command prompt, boom, because these are the only numbers we need. Now let's go ahead and open up our browser. And in a brand new tab, right up here at the top where you would normally type in the breakdown.xyz, youtube.com, right up here, type in that default gateway. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1. Copy that and paste it right up here. Hit enter and boom. It gives us a login box. Now mine just pops in from the top these days, but Linksys, which is a router I used to have, had a really nice GUI style interface where you could enter in your username and password. But no matter what, you're going to be asked for a username and some sort of password. In here, you want to type in your router's username and password. Luckily, we have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to find your router's password. It goes through everything that you need to know, five different methods to get your router's password. Start with method one, usually that works, but pretty much everybody finds it by method number three or four. Some people do have to contact their ISP from what I've seen, but it's not a lot, so don't worry about that. Usually by method four, you have found your router's password and you can come back over here and log in, which is what I'm gonna do and then we'll port forward. So here we are, I've now logged into my router. Your router probably looks completely different from mine and that's okay for two reasons. One, as I go through and port forward, I'm gonna be spitting off about a thousand different names that port forwarding could be found in and could be located in and could be called in your router software. But most importantly, we got a guide, of course we do. On our website, we have this guide here, which is a complete guide to port forwarding on any router. Watch this video here. It's gonna go through all the different ways that you can port forward on all the top routers out there today. Linksys, Netgear, things like that, Verizon, AT&T, it's all covered here. And even if your specific router isn't covered, watch that video because that video is going to help you out. It's going to basically walk you through all the routers out there and a lot of the routers use similar software. So even if your specific router isn't mentioned, watch that video, pick up on the terms, pick up on what things could look like. And then once you get in your router, you're probably like, hey, this is like Netgear. Hey, this is like Linksys. Hey, this is like Cisco or AT&T or Verizon, another router that's out there. Nevertheless, here we are. Let's go ahead and port forward. For me, it's going to be an advanced. For you, it might be an advanced advanced. It might be an advanced administration, advanced security. It might just be in security. It might be in apps and gaming. It might be a NAT forwarding, N-A-T forwarding. It could also be a NAT gaming, N-A-T gaming, right? So either one of those, all of those, it could be any of them. For me, it is in advanced, and then it is advanced again. And then finally, it is port forwarding slash port triggering. As you can see, I already have an active Minecraft port forward here. I'm going to delete that, right? We don't need that right now. We're going to make another one. But this is where you want to port forward. Now, for me, I have to click a add custom service button. For you, it might just be an add button. It might be a new port forward button. Or you may just have a big list on your port forwarding page of just like all of these empty boxes. Just go with the first one if that's the case. Now, let's go ahead and for me, click add custom service. Now, in here, what we want to do is name or ID is going to be Minecraft, right? That's just because this is for a Minecraft server, so it makes sense that the ID or name is going to be Minecraft. For the protocol, it's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Either way, you want to make sure both TCP and UDP are selected. If they aren't, Go ahead and do this twice. Do it once for TCP and once for UDP. Once you've got that selected, we can go ahead and move on to the actual port. Now, this is actually super easy. Anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T. Anything involving the word port, 25565. That's what it's going to be. Anything involving the word port. External port. There's that word port. 25565. Internal ports. Guess what it's going to be? It did it automatically for us, but it is 25565. Port 1, port 2. External port. Internal port. Inside port. Outside port. It doesn't matter what they call it on your router. If it has the word port in it, put 25565 right there. Next, we need to click the internal IP address or select the device. Either one's gonna be the same, but for us, we're gonna go ahead and actually just enter it. However, you can see right here it is if we select it as well. This is gonna be the IPv4 address that we found earlier. See, we didn't just get that for no reason. We got it for this step. So for us, that is going to be 192.168.1.16. Now, like I said, you may be able to select it from the device dropdown and right there it is for me, right? It's this one. And you can see the IP address does reflect. You may just have the device dropdown list. If that's the case, just select the device you're making your Minecraft server on. Nevertheless, we can finally click save, apply, anything like that. We are good. We're done. However, some of you may have had an external 
or outside IP address listed for your port forward. It's not common, but it can happen. But guess what? Anyone watching this video needs that external public IP address. Remember, this is hosted on your public IP address. To find that, go to the description. What's my IP? It's linked down below. It takes you to our website where you can find your IP address. Right here it is for me. But keep in mind, this is what people can find from your IP address, your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP. And that's why it's so important that you don't give this out to anybody and everybody. You only give it out to people you trust. It's why you can only see 177 for us right now. And everything else is blacked out as well because we don't want to give this out to everybody. Nevertheless, I have gotten this copy now. And with this copy, if we needed it on our port forward, we could go paste it in here. Boom. Done. Otherwise, it's time to finally join our Minecraft server. So to do that, we need to start the server back up. Just go ahead and double click on the server.jar here. It's going to start the server right like so. Fire it right on up. Once the server is started up, I can open up Minecraft and we can join this server. So Boom, there we go, the server is now started. As you can see, it says done there. Let's get Minecraft open. And there we go, Minecraft is now open, server is started. We can click on multiplayer, direct connection, and this time we're not gonna use localhost. We can use our public IP address. This is also the exact same IP address that your friends are gonna join your Minecraft server with. So the IP address we're using here, that one we got from our website, what's my IP? That is the IP address you want to send to your friends so they can join your server. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and click join server here. And right like so, it's going to go ahead, wait a second to connect, get the internet working because kind of what's happening is going out and then coming back to ourselves kind of freaks it out. But as you can see, live right there, boom, we are now in the server. Now, if you can't join your server that way, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, what we just did was a little weird. If you think about it, we just connected to our computer through the internet, right? And that's kind of a weird thing. And some internet service providers just don't allow that. So as long as your friends can join via your public IP, you are good to go. It's not a problem. You can join via that local host. It'll work just the same. So your friends are the only people that have to be able to join via your public IP. However, it is worth noting that if you do have issues with your friends joining, it's probably that Windows Defender that we talked about earlier. So go check that out. That link is in the description. Also in the description is another super helpful video right here, how to fix a broken Minecraft server. 21 minutes, almost as long as this video, just troubleshooting how you can fix different issues on a Minecraft server. If you want to know how to add more RAM, all of that stuff, Stuff, you can find out that in this video. I think there's also a video dedicated in the description on how to add a RAM to a Minecraft server. Our content library is so huge. These, these video descriptions on these server tutorials are awesome, so check them out. But nevertheless, that is how you can start a Minecraft server. Keep in mind, Apex makes this so much easier. Under five minutes instead of more like 20 minutes. So much more difficult than it should be, in my opinion, to start a Minecraft server, but it's how Java works, and that's how Java's built, and that's how Java servers are started. Sadly, Bedrock servers aren't that much easier to start, but still, it does suck it is this difficult, and that's why services like Apex exist. Super easy to get a server up and running. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more incredible Minecraft tutorials every single day of the week. We'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.